Hi, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these solar can images. I recently posted an Instagram reel and it hit a million views and so many people were asking how do you make one of these? And they're really simple, they're effective just a pinhole camera that you leave outside for six months. So today I'll be showing you how to make these pinhole cameras and some of the results you can expect to get from them. Now if you're clicking this video and you don't know what a solar can is whatsoever, I'll, I'll run you through the basics. Pretty much it's an alternative form of analog photography that utilizes a pinhole camera to capture the sun in its sky over a prolonged period of time. Exposures can be anywhere from three months to over a year, it just depends how long you want to leave them. For my examples, I started these in January of 2024 and took them down in May of that same year and they captured the sun at its lowest point in the sky up until the highest point. Yes for those of you who don't know this weird white streaks you see across the sky is the sun just moving throughout the exposure. So when you're planning to take one of these images it's best to account for someone that is going to be in direct view of the sun. Anyway let's get into the making of this video. For this video you're going to need a can, for this example I'm using a monster can but other brands are available and also please for the love of god make sure you clean the can before you use it. Duct tape and you're gonna need quite a bit of duct tape, some darkroom paper, scrap card, scissors, a can opener, and finally a needle or a pin to actually make the lens of the camera. For starters, you wanna take the can opener and remove the top of the can so you have a nice open surface. And just to get out of the way, we're gonna make the lens of the camera now as well. So you just wanna take the needle and find roughly the middle point of the can and poke a little hole in it. Next, you wanna trace a circle around the rim of your can and then draw an even larger circle around that and cut that out of the scrap card. After cutting out the large a circle you want to kind of make these rivets and just kind of leave a gap in between some of them but this will just kind of help as a reinforcement while we're making the lid of the can. Once your piece of card is all cut out you want to put it on top of the can and using some of that duct tape just put small amounts on so you can secure a kind of base structure of what the lid should look like. The next part is probably the longest part of this process and it is just reinforcing that lid until it is light proof and secure. In typical Blue Peter fashion here's two cans I made earlier and as you can see these lids are way more reinforced than the one I'm working on here. A good tip when it comes to these lids is you want to just hold it up to a direct light source and if you cannot see any light coming through then you're fine. This bit is essential as it acts as the buffer between this being a light proof container allowing you to expose the image. Another tip I forgot to include while recording this is that I actually put masking tape around the rim of my cans as well. This kind of just thickens the top of the can so when you do secure the lid it's a bit more tight which is essential. Once you have a lid that is ready and secure you're pretty much done with making the camera. The final part is adding the shutter which what I do is just fold a bit of duct tape in on itself and stick it over the pinhole. It's very basic. When you want to expose it, you just take that duct tape off and when you're done, you put the duct tape back on. And the final step of this process, which I can't show you because you would have to do it in a dark room, is taking your dark room paper, cutting it to size so it can fit inside the can, sliding it in and then putting the lid on and sealing that with duct tape. Now these solar cans do actually double as regular pinhole cameras and I'll throw on screen some images I've taken with these as just pinhole cameras. This process is very different though as you will need access to a dark room to develop the image. However, the benefits of a solar can are they don't require any processing or stopping or fixing. The image is literally burned into the paper so you can see it. Here I'll show some results of what the actual paper negatives look like. This is one exposure I did in summer of 2022 and it was my first ever attempt and I only did it for three months. As you can tell, it doesn't look amazing, but you can see the streaks in the sky of where the sun would have been. And then here are my later experiments, which show a lot better progress of what I was trying to do. These have a lot more detail in them, even down to the buildings of the surrounding area, but especially in the sky. One downside to these images I will admit here is that I used glossy darkroom paper, as it was the only one I had available at the time. And I just, I don't think glossy looks amazing with this kind of exposure. So if you can, go for pearl or matte paper. And that's the entire process of making a solar can. They're fairly simple and easy to make. Your next step is obviously picking somewhere you want to expose this image for. Bear in mind it's going to be there a minimum of three months so you know you don't want it to be somewhere that you're going to easily be knocking or interfering with. For these exposures I put them around areas of my flat facing out of windows and they weren't ever really touched or knocked and that's kind of ideal for this situation. But you know some of you might not want to can duct taped to your window for six months so you don't have to do that. There is alternatively the option of actually putting them outside in a location so you can capture a cooler image. The downsides to this are you don't know if nature is going to affect the can and maybe destroy it or someone might see it and take it down because they don't know what it is. There's multiple measures you can go around this whether you want to camouflage the can so it blends in or you want to write in big writing scientific experiments so people don't touch it. But yeah that's the whole process and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
I do have a plan to make some of these when I move back home outside so stick around and see how it goes. It'll probably be about half a year till you see those results though. And for my long term fans of my YouTube channel I am so sorry I have not been uploading recently. I'd say going from like about September until July I just fell into a bit of a burnout, stress, depression where I just didn't have the motivation to create art like I used to. Now that university is finished for me, which by the way I graduated with a first so hooray for me. I have a lot more free time on my hands and I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about what my plans are and what I want to do artistically. As always if you've enjoyed my content please feel free to subscribe, stick around and definitely follow my Instagram. I'm posting on there a ton at the moment and I'm getting a lot of good engagement so that's where you're best to find me. But yeah, thank you for watching as always. Uh, I hope this didn't feel like a rushed, awkward video. Uh, <laughs> my out.